Great everybody, it's your man Mark with MD Ready. Welcome once again. We're going to be talking about a sub gun saga, I guess we can call it. Please make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Check me out on Instagram, MD underscore ready. Okay? Follow me on YouTube, share, like, subscribe, follow, comment, all that good stuff. So I am your local firearms instructor in the DMV, DC, Maryland, Virginia area. I teach a variety of courses from moving and shooting to concealed carry, do personal protection, do a lot of good things, right? Even do consultation for our good folks. Now, one of the things that one of my subscribers, a good buddy of mine, Oscar, had mentioned to me, and I know I'm behind Oscar, my apologies, but got around to it, talking about the sub guns, right? Um, so this seems to be it seems to be one of the bees that people were into that I found reference to whether it's carry permits and even sub guns. I'm not sure if it's because people are have a little bit of fear of the rifle related cartridges for home defense, or they just want to have something else, a mattress there, side on. Okay, this is my Glock 19, this is what I'm carrying, and an in waistband holster, okay? So, with that being said, thanks again. So, what we're going to start off with is, uh, what is, you know, of course you all know what my uh, primary uh, home defense farm is, a kind of a would-be based on, if you if you haven't seen it, please go check out, I did a five-part series on um, kind of a home defense situation, right? What I may possibly use, what I would be interested in using. Of course, gun owners, as we know, guns kind of get moved around, changes go. So, you know, one day somebody, I, I may be interested in using a handgun for home defense. Next day it could be, you know, you, you don't know, shotgun or whatever it may be, right? So, let's get into it. This is one of my babies. This is an AR-9. This is actually a, what is it, a Diamondback DB-9. I think they call it DB-9R, okay? So, nice bright white light on the end. 5 inch uh, a blast can. I like iron sights for home defense because I don't want to have to worry about dicking around with optics. Uh, and if you do have an optic, definitely have some backups. Okay, it has a brace on here, sling of course, and you might say, what's this crazy thing up the front? You know how the hoodies be talking about having sticks and drums and all that good stuff. This is um, actually a RWB, 30 round magazine. It's pretty reliable. Make sure you play around with these mag, uh, the followers and these, these uh, extended mags. Okay, because they're pretty much they fall on kind of like what you use for like a Glock 18. Uh, the gun is not uh, chambered, you know what I'm saying? So, no worry, chill out. I don't feel like, well, you know what? I will do it. Just because I'm a safety Nazi and I know that it's clear, but everybody else doesn't, it is clear. Okay, now this one I keep, I think it's either Liberty Defense or some type of round that's similar to it, where it's the super fast plus P. Um, rounds does me pretty well. Okay, this is a ten and a half inch uh, barrel. So these those uh, those rounds are screaming out of this barrel. Now, realistically, the the best kind of sweet spot for a sub gun is going to be between a like a nine to eleven inch barrel. After that, you get to the point of diminishing return where you're actually not getting as much velocity. Like the 16-inch barrel AR9s, I, I think they're just kind of pointless, being honest with you. Because you do get extended velocity, but it's not really supercharging that round to the point where you're getting exponential velocity and effectiveness. Okay, so as we know, most handguns are going to be between like uh, pistols 3.5-inch to maybe a 5-inch barrel. If you're lucky, you find an extended uh, uh, a slide like the 17, Glock 17L, 6-inch barrel, so it's, it's punching out of that, out of that freaking uh, barrel. So, one thing I, I know I missed, I skipped over, what is a sub gun? Not a submachine gun, which would be cool for everybody to have. You know, I don't have a little fun switch on here. But a sub gun is pretty much, um, you're taking uh, the little, the pistol caliber, and you're extending the effectiveness of that particular, um, that system, as well as the cartridge. I know that's probably not the textbook dictionary, but just to give you an understanding, for my Glock 19, it takes what? Now I'm later meter ammunition, right? This also does the same thing. But the sub gun will allow me to extend the capability of the cartridge and the overall weapon system. So instead of me having two points of contact with my pistol, I now have four points of contact with this uh, AR pistol or if you have SBR, right? Also, you then get the ability to, instead of just having the 9mm come out the four inch barrel, uh, like my Glock 19, so four, four and a quarter, I think it's four inch barrel. Instead of it just come out at, at, at about between 1,000 to 1,100, uh, 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 um, feet per second, right? I can then come out with this ten and a half inch, which I'm gonna. I'm just gonna assume. I, I'm, I'm sure I'm wrong, 
but I'm going to assume instead of it being a thousand or eleven hundred feet per second, maybe that standard velocity nine millimeter 115 grain round, maybe it's thing going what 1400, 1500 feet per second, and I'd be crazy to say maybe even 1600 feet per second, right? That will allow you to have that extra umph, and then when that freaking um, hollow point hits its intended target, it's going to expand and it's probably going to penetrate nice and deep. But it's also going to expand very well. And you'll even see some videos out there where people have shot in just ball ammo through uh, your sub gun, right? Your sub gun. And with that additional velocity, not only is it more punchier, but it'll even flatten out. That, that solid, the solid round will even flatten out when it hits something because of extended velocity. And do understand the hollow points have to have a certain amount of velocity to even perform properly. So when you get these super snubby guns and stuff like that, you may not have the proper expansion because it doesn't have the velocity behind it. All right, I gave you guys a freaking, uh, the science and all that mess behind it. Let's get back to the gun. So you saw this gun. I did a little paint job on it, just like I got a little bored with it, but I've had this gun for quite some time. This is a really fun gun. It's not super loud. So anybody who's interested in, in, in training on the AR platform, you say you want to get a little beyond a 22. AR9, why not? All right. So a little more expensive than 22, cheaper than 556. And I'd rather defend my life with this than a 22 um, if I had the option, correct? So we're going to put this to the side. DB9, I believe R. Besides that, then you also get into, which is more of my, I like to use this as my outdoorsy ATV kind of gun because it's nice and small. This is going to be my, I think it's Freedom Ordnance FX9. Okay, this is an eight and a quarter barrel. It is under that 10 inch, but it'll still have more velocity than, you know, coming out of a standard pistol. As you can see, I have the arms up and ready to go. It is a little dusty and dirty, so excuse it. Let's do a quick safety check. This one is loaded up with some standard hollow points, all right? It has, the only thing I don't like about this gun, guys, is going to be the fact that it has a um, proprietary charging handle. So that's kind of a blow. But other than that, it does very, very well. Um, I have a little blast, kind of a little small one, because, again, this gun has to be compact. You can see the brace is pretty much pushed virtually all the way in. I do have uh, another uh, 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 magazine up front, and it's... Um, Angled foregrip, okay. It's not a verb grip, it's an angled foregrip, okay. Then I have a little light on here. You might say, We well, have a green light. Realistically, initially, I think my, my thought process behind it was, Hey, let's put something on it so that that won't cast a, a crazy beam if I'm in the woods, just so I can see what's going on uh, near me. But I might change it to a white light, but it's been doing what it needs to do for, for some time. And plus, typically, if you when I do ride anyway, I'm going to carry my nine mil, so the magazine for my nine mil. Block fits right in there. So, um, yeah. Again, it's extending that capability, right? That's pretty much all it's doing for me. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not trying to, <laughs> not trying to go to war or anything like that. But I want to make sure in the event that I do get into something, I have something to defend myself. Something that's going to be able to be capable and just give me a little bit of extension um, with the round that I'm already currently carrying. All right. Now, before I show you kind of the where it all started i would say right i'm going to give and get you guys into another option i was throw out there you're going to have your microroni okay microroni throw a little light on here all right it has like you know you get the little 400 i think it's 400 lumen light there it is because it's like 400 lumens right um it already has a built-in blast can you can put either a glock 19 17 in here this one i believe this is already set up for like my glock 19 and you have a place to put an additional magazine wonderful right so the wonderful thing about this little uh micro roni is that different variations of glocks this is an older one it's like a gen one they got a little fancier now i only have a red dot up here because realistically if i got a situation with an optic diff i'll just rip the pistol out and keep keep going i was able to have a student shoot freaking dime sized groups with this roni with my glock 17 at like 15 yards, dime size group, I'm gonna say quarter size group. Because once they got their form and their stance proper, they were just punching them out like a sewing machine, just not even thinking about it, putting the right red dot in the circle and just keep going, keep going, keep going. So they did very well, this is another option. Uh, for people who may not really be into spending a lot of money on guns and all that good stuff, but you already have a particular pistol that you like, and um, this may be an option for you, so be your bed size set up, go to sleep at night, throw your gun in here, and you're good to go. Okay, Roni. It's not a gun, but it is a chassis system. 
Now, what did, what did the sub gun kind of situation come from, right? Um, I don't know the full history on it, but I do. You can look at some of the Western movies, right? And realistically, the Cowboys wanted to have a way to extend the capability of their 357 Magnum, their 45 Colt, you know, uh, those particular pistols, right? So what they would do is they would have that little five or six shooter, but they will also have a good old lever gun. Lever Revolution. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm not trying to advertise the market for any type of organization, so I don't even think I'm doing it. This, this gun is actually clear. This is my, I think it's a Citadel is what it's called. Yep, it's a Citadel. And this one is in 357 Magnum. Okay. Really cool. Shoots very well. Has a little doctor on top. It actually comes with a threaded barrel, too. I never, I don't think I've even done a review or anything like this in this particular firearm. I just shot it a couple times. I always wanted a nice lever action. I made a mistake of buying a lever action in 45 Colt. Not saying it's a mistake if anybody has one. But I had the 45 Colt, but I didn't have a gun that's pretty much dedicated to 45 Colt. I had the Governor, moved on to the, the, the uh, what is it called? The Taurus, Taurus Raging Judge Magnum, which shoots 454 Casul. Um, 45 long Colt and also has the ability to shoot three inch magnum um, slugs or bucks if you want. I haven't, I've only shot the 410 slug, three inch slugs out of it and it, it packs a nice little waddle. So, realistically, I, I really didn't, you know, it's, it's just like, yeah, nah, I don't need it. But if I come across me a 454 Casul bolt rifle, that's gonna be so dope, I'm gonna grab it. But in the meantime, I already have 357 magnum pistols, so I was like, why not, you know. I have guns that shoot 357 Magnum wheel guns and semi-automatic guns. So, I said, why not add this to the mix? This actually handles the 357 Magnum pretty well. Pretty much no recoil on it at all. And you're already getting a nice velocity with a 357 Magnum out of a, what, a, a snub nose. You're getting more velocity than you have out of a standard 4.5 inch 9 mil, I believe, right? 115 grain. So, what the guys on the West would do, from my understanding from the movies and just from doing a little bit of digging, is that they would have that same caliber for their pistol, their wheel gun, and they can extend the capability and range of that particular um, caliber with this rifle. Whether it was, a, I don't think they had NFA back in the 1700s, 1800s, but, you know, they would have, you know, the Henry Big Boy or Winchester or whatever the heck they had, right? So the same thing kind of goes with modernized firearms today. You have your, your pistol. You have your pistol, right? Got your pistol? But you're like, you know what? I need a little more on. So you say, instead of just having my Glock 19, let me also have my Glock 19, but then I'll have my freaking sub gun. So I have some more capability. Plane is going over with guys. But in any event, that wraps up the video. Um, prayfully, it made some sense to you guys. If it didn't, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please let's discuss it in the, in the comment section. Y'all have a blessed day. And again, if you need any farm, um, training consultation whatever it may be definitely hit me up dm me md underscore ready you can also email me at um info at mlmellc.com and uh, i'll respond to you guys there take care have a blessed one be safe and uh let's get it in get some training in